Most of the ocean is still shrouded in mystery, whether we're talking about dark corners or creatures that are hiding in the depths. But sometimes, it gives us a peek into scary things it hides in its cold, dark depths. Like when you hear on the news that there are some deep sea creatures washed ashore after a powerful storm once again. Some just look weird, while others are real monsters that live at depths of more than 3,300 feet. The coldest and deepest parts of the ocean have created one specific phenomenon called gigantism. So, sea spiders, squids, worms, and many other animals, mostly invertebrates, or creatures without backbones, they are all way bigger and scarier than the versions we see in the more shallow areas. In the Pacific depths, you can see a sea sponge as large as a minivan. Or what about the colossal squid that lives in sub-Antarctic waters and is nearly 14 times longer than the arrow squid, a type that mostly lives in New Zealand? Researchers found many of these underwater monsters in the abyssal zone of the ocean. Back in 2021, the researchers showed images of the giant phantom jelly. It was at a depth of 3,200 feet. Its tentacles were 33 feet long. Wow, I wouldn't like to face that one on the beach. It probably eats only small fish and plankton, but it can swim to depths of more than 21,900 feet. And down there, this giant jelly doesn't have enough food. How does it survive then? Scientists haven't figured it out yet. And there are even more questions related to the giant squid, the biggest one ever found. This monster is 43 feet long with a weight of nearly a ton. Imagine if those tentacles would grab your car or something like that. They would smash it like it was a toy. There's no light in the abyssal zone. Sun rays just can't penetrate that deep. So there's no algae or underwater plants there. Local animals mostly eat snow. Marine snow is not like the regular one you build a snowman with. It consists of any small flakes or remains that fall from the surface of the ocean maybe even some leftovers that animals up there couldn't eat. So it's not much, but apparently it's enough for very large creatures that hide deep down there, like giant squids. Squids that generally live at such depths don't bother going after their prey. They just wait until the poor animal swims right up to their long tentacles and falls into a trap. It may not be the best method ever because not many animals will even swim into these dark cold parts but it's the method that saves energy. A giant squid eats only one ounce of fish daily, which is approximately 45 calories. That's nearly 50 times fewer calories than an average person should eat per day. So when a squid gets one fish, it saves it for a couple of days. I hope giant squids won't get the idea to go to the surface and look for food when there's not enough of it in the abyssal zone. And I hope even more that giant Greenland sharks won't get that same idea. You can find them at depths of up to 7,200 feet. They're twice as slow as we usually walk. They swim at a speed of 1.12 feet per second. Their slowness is part of the energy saving mechanism that creatures down there need to survive. But they can speed up in the form of short bursts when they need to catch prey but they kind of change their diet from predator to scavenger, considering their environment. There will be more leftovers falling from the surface than animals to go after. Greenland sharks grow just 0.4 inches per year, and they're mostly 20 feet long, which means they live for a very long time, sometimes up to 400 years. They also have a slow metabolism, and that's one of the main factors for their long life too. Greenland sharks like to spend their time in cold waters. They're adapted to that since their tissues have specific chemical compounds that prevent the forming of ice crystals all over their body. That means they have some sort of natural antifreeze. So what makes them so big? Scientists are still not sure, but some theories try to explain it. There's this thing called Kleiber's rule that says bigger animals tend to be more efficient. Just take a small fish and compare it to a whale with a mass hundreds of times bigger. The whale has a greater metabolism. It conserves energy more efficiently and loses less of it to the surroundings through heat. Moving on, bigger animals can ingest bigger prey. 
They're more likely to go through tough issues in their environment or defend themselves from predators going after them. Also, the body gets bigger when temperatures are lower. The Greenland shark is a perfect example. So are giant sea spiders. Sea spiders are generally common, and you find some very small ones at 0.04 inches. But in deeper parts of the Antarctic, they become three-foot-long giants. They grow so big because the cold water has more oxygen. That way, more of it diffuses into the animal's body, and that allows it to grow bigger. Yeah, both as a creature and a nightmare. And how about this giant tube worm? Researchers found it accidentally while they were exploring the mysteries of the Pacific Ocean floor. They stumbled upon unusual hydrothermal vents. Volcanic heat is a thing that gets them going. As water seeps down through faults or cracks in the rock, these vents change their direction. When the water gets out of the vent, it's rich in different minerals and chemicals. Most animals wouldn't survive being around this toxic soup of chemicals, but not these tube worms. They came as a true surprise, because not only are they not bothered by these toxic vents and the almost boiling temperature of the water, but they developed entire ecosystems there. They're unique because they don't need sunlight to survive. Instead, small bacteria are their main source of energy. That bacteria gets their energy directly from these toxic chemicals. So it's not photosynthesis, but a process called chemosynthesis. And these tube worms don't have mouths. These bacteria live inside them. Strange story, huh? Plus, these scary worms reach up to eight feet. Giant isopods are no better either. They lurk at the depths of the ocean of 1,640 feet or more below, far away from the sunlight, looking like some monstrous wood lice. They spend most of their time on the seabed, hoping to find some food falling from higher levels of the ocean. Check out their small hooked claws at the ends of their legs. Isopods use them to remain more stable while moving around the ocean floor. Since there's no light, they have long antennae that help them feel their way around. These sensory antennas are about half the length of their body. Giant isopods have pretty big eyes compared to their body size too. They can grow over 12 inches from head to tail. And these fellas are really patient. Remember how we said animals down there rarely get food? Sometimes they need to wait for years to get a proper meal. That's why their metabolism is amazingly slow. Five years later. They can go for five years without eating anything. Imagine that. I get hungry just talking about this. In 2006, a biologist did research to compare the differences between the shallows and the deep sea regions. He realized the deep sea mirrors the island rule. First, isolated parts of land develop biodiversity you won't find anywhere else. Second, small-bodied life there grows much bigger when it's isolated, compared to life on large land masses. Resources are limited, but also competition and predators. And we don't know much about these deep sea creatures. It's too expensive and too complicated to carry out such research. So we'll just wait for more raging storms to show us at least part of the monstrous world cold ocean depths hide. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.